I came here tonight to play chess. A game of chess is like a sword fight. You must think first before you move. By my Wu Tang style. I'd like to try you, Wu Tang style. Let's begin then. All right, so we have the chess board. As you can see, we got 64 squares, eight by eight. The way we move the pieces and record our games, we use a system called algebraic notation. In algebraic notation, the squares are labeled where the coordinates intersect. So this square, say if I move this pawn out, this pawn is located at D4. Okay, so you see that? That's where the pawns, uh, that's where the pawn is landing. It's landing on this D4 square. That's D4. And then my opponent moved D5. As you see here, it's labeled D5, it's shown here D5. All right, so each um, each square, again, each square is labeled. So if I move this knight out, okay, knight to C3, you see the notation, and then C5 uh, with the pawn. The pawn is not labeled. Um, it's only labeled when you actually capture a square. So let's, let me show you this. So this D pawn, going to capture C5, okay? And so that in that case, that pawn was labeled D takes C5. So the D pawn captured, the X is for capture C5. All right, so I won't go into too much more of that for now, but that's how the games are recorded. A lot of times when you are playing your games and want to go back and maybe study your games, maybe see what you did wrong, see what you could have done better, you have your notation there to go back and study your games. It's also for tournament use. If you have some type of uh, issue or, or something going on with your tournament game, the tournament director can come over and, and see your notation and uh, give his ruling on whatever the issue might be. Um, see, also you can study other games. Um, a good way to get better is by studying Grandmaster games and going there and uh, you know checking out some of those games and seeing what the masters do. A uh, good way to get better that way. All right, let's go back to the pieces. All right, so again, we have a pawn. Okay, that's the pawn. You have a rook, have a knight, a bishop, queen, and king. Let's just go in order, all right? So, piece names. I've already told you the piece names. Let's go with some piece values. So, instead of going through this, let me just go back to play and give you the values there. So the pawn is worth one point. Uh, the rook is five points. The knight and bishop are both worth three points. Queen is nine points and the king is an infinite amount. It doesn't have a point value. It is the whole entire game. Okay. Um, and those points are just relative or it's kind of um you know the, any piece could be worth more depending on the position but uh, just kind of a rule of thumb that's what the points uh the point value system is let's look at rook moves i wanted to start with the bishop but the rook is fine all right so the rook moves vertically and horizontally the rook moves vertically and horizontally. So up and down, side to side. It can move as many squares as you wish. Okay. 
Okay, so this rook in this position can move here. As long as it's in a straight line. Okay. You can't jump over your own piece or you can't pass through your own piece. And also once you take an opponent's piece, say if you had an opponent's piece here, you can move here and you can take that piece and that will be the end of your move. So you can't jump over any pieces. Okay, so this rook can move to all these squares. All right, so can this rook capture the pawn in one move? So remember, the rook moves vertically and horizontally. So in order to get to this pawn, I will have to make at least two moves to get there, since I can only move in a straight line. So the answer to this question would be no, because I would have to move here, then here, or I would have to move here, then here. So that will be a no. And the rook captured the pawn in one move. Again, we move sideways and up and down. So since the rook can move horizontally, then this is a yes. And the rook captured the pawn in one move. Again, rook moves uh, vertically and horizontally. So since I'm not moving in a straight line here to get this pawn, then the answer is no. So I'm gonna pause here and come back to Rooks later. All right, peace. All right, welcome back scholars. I believe we left off on the Rook moves. We are gonna continue now with the rest of our learning chess series. Again, this is for my scholars to remediate and also any family members who, wants to, who want to join in and uh, learn chess maybe for the first time or maybe get a, a refresher on the moves so you can participate and, and uh, play with your students. All right, let me go ahead. So again, we left off with the rook. Let me go to the bishop. Okay, so the bishop moves diagonally. It moves diagonally. Diagonally. And just like with a rook, it can move as many squares as it wants as long as it's in a straight line. You can't uh, jump over any pieces. You can't go through any pieces. All right, so that's the bishop. It goes diagonally. Diagonal. All right, so let's look at some positions. So I'm clicking each square the bishop can move to. All right, can the bishop capture the pawn in one move? Again, the bishop moves diagonally. Bishop moves diagonally. So if we're going to capture this bishop, I mean this pawn, we won't be able to do it in one move because we will have to make, actually we cannot catch this pawn at all because this pawn being a dark square, I mean, sorry, this bishop being a dark square bishop can only move on the dark square. So it doesn't matter how many moves this bishop uh, eventually makes, it can never touch this piece. So uh, in the beginning um, setup, you have a bishop here on the dark square and you have a bishop here on the light square. So the light square bishop can eventually touch all of the light squares. And uh, again, a black dark square bishop can only touch the dark squares. All right, um, it's a, a little aside. The bishop and the knight, which we'll talk about a little later, they're both worth three points. Because the bishop, since it, well, being that it can only reach half of the board, it can reach the other side of the board in one move. Whereas the knight, it cannot reach the other side in one move, but it can eventually hit every square on the board. All right, so anyway, that's the bishop. So the answer for this one, no. Let's get another one. 
And the bishop captured the pawn in one move. All right, so this time, this pawn is in direct um, line with this bishop. So yes, this bishop can capture the pawn in one move. The bishop would just move here, capture on c6, ending the move. So again, it can't capture the pawn and keep going, or it can't jump over the pawn. So if it was going to capture the pawn, it would have to, cap have to capture right there at c6. So the answer here is yes. Okay, one move. No, it's not in line. It's on a dark square. This is a light square bishop, so this bishop can never touch that dark square. Okay, and the bishop capture. Nope, not on the diagonal. It's on the dark square again. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't push forward. All right, so next one. Here, we're in line, so yes. Okay, the bishop will move straight. Show how the bishop can capture the pawn in two moves. So in two moves, how can we get to this square? So we got, we have a couple of options. We can either move here, then here, or to practice safety, we'll talk about the pawn and how it, uh, operates in a bit but we can also go here and then here so to go the safe route we'll go here first and then on our next move there i'm going to cast the pawn and two moves so look at it we can go here and then here or we can go here and here. Both are fine. All right, again, capturing in two moves. We go here and here. And I believe that's your only option. One, two, three, four. You got, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so one. Two. Okay, again, how can we capture the pawn in two moves? This is a dark square bishop, so we know we can get there. All right, so nothing happening this way, so we can go here, here. And if I'm moving too fast, just go ahead and pause the video and try to do it yourself. And then, uh, you know, let me continue. Of course, you already know that. Click on all of the pawns the bishop can capture. All right, so let's look at all the diagonals for the bishop. So here, there's nothing on this diagonal. Here, going up, we running smack dab into this one. So that's one. That's the only one that we can capture on this initial move. Well, you know what? It didn't say that can capture on the first move. It said all the pawns that can, can capture. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and take this one too, because it is a dark square pawn, but I'm not quite sure what the question is asking. If it, if it needs to take something on the first move, then this would be the only one. But all the ones we can eventually get to would be this one and this one. So let me go ahead and check both of those and see what happens. Oh. All right, so they must want the one on the first move. So let's get the first move, first move, okay? All right, so they wanted the, the capture on the first move. Click on all the pawns the bishop can capture. So I'm gonna assume again, we're talking about the first move. First move is here, first move on the diagonal is here. Any more diagonals? Nope, oh, I, I think we got it. Okay. Okay, again, let's look at everything we can capture. So look at all the diagonals only for this bishop. All the diagonals. So we can go here, 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 and that's it. Okay. All right. Again, 
what can we capture? Here, here, looking at the diagonals. Diagonal, diagonal, so diagonal and diagonal. Okay, we got everybody. Move the bishop to the blue box in two moves. You wanna make it to this blue box in two moves. And you do it. One, two, or one, two. Okay. okay. Let's get to this blue box in two moves. We got here, here, or here, and here. Two moves, let's get to this blue box. Again, we plan it out. We go here, here, or here and here. All right. Two moves. Here, here. All right, so that does it for the bishop. Next up, we have the queen. We saw them practicing with each other, their Kung Fu is first class. 